Welcome to this week's video guys. This one is going to be a very long one. So I'm going to leave timestamps for every single weapon that we break down in the video description below. During this video, we're looking to do a test that shows the spray pattern of every single weapon. And then I'm going to show you how to control them. As part of this test, every single weapon is going to be set to five meters. I know that some of these weapons don't really fit into that five meter fight category. However, in order to make sure that you can see the spray, then I needed to bring the range target closer in. When I was in the pre-testing, what I found sometimes is that when I was allowing the recoil to take the weapon wherever it wanted, it would often end up off of the actual board and I couldn't then see what the spray pattern was doing. For full automatic weapons, I'm simply gonna press my finger down on the fire button and let it go wherever it wants. Whilst for the semi-automatics, I'm just gonna keep tapping away as fast as I can until the mag is emptied. There will be absolutely no control of recoil. I'm simply going to press ADS, if that is what was required, we're going to do all of the alternate fires or on the fire button. There will be no grip at all on the back end of the mouse to control that recoil. Starting off with the Vandal, what you're going to see is something that sticks through a lot of the automatic weapons in this game, a lot of the spray patterns, and that is the figure seven. You're going to see it with this weapon. What it does is after the initial couple of bullets, it kicks up towards the right and then comes left and right. So this is where you get that figure seven saying it draws that number in front of you, basically. So as such, you get these first like three or four bullets that are pretty tight, pretty closely grouped, and then it arches up towards the right and then draws this left and right. As you can see, a figure seven appearing. That's where it gets its name from. So the way in which I would control this weapon, you're aiming at head height and then I'd pull down towards this lower jaw area and then keep tucking in and out. As you can see, what you get is that is that harsh flick out to the right and left. So you want to be ready to compensate for that. So you start here, head down into the jaw. To be honest, my suggestion for controlling the weapon would to be take those first couple of shots, pull down to the left side of the jaw. Once you start to feel it flick, let go and reset yourself. I wouldn't bother trying to control that really flicky process unless you absolutely have to and then be ready for how aggressive it is. Next up, we've got the next assault rifle, and that is the Phantom. The Phantom has the same figure seven pattern as the Vandal. However, it, it is smoother. It's, it's considerably less of a flick once you start to get into that left and right process, as so. So there's still, there's still that harsh drag across. However, it is, it is more controllable. It's more something that you can see happening in front of you gradually rather than just straight across to the other side. So I'd control this weapon in the same way. You want your first couple of bullets into the center mass and then you want to come down into this left sided jaw area. We are talking from your side so you want to pull down and towards the left aiming for this kind of area and then you want to tuck it back into the middle for that initial flick. Again, when it comes to the figure seven part, unless you absolutely have to, I wouldn't bother. I'd let go, reset myself, and start shooting again. One of the things that's worth noting is that the ADS follows the exact same pattern for both weapons. However, it's slightly tighter spread, so it is less vertical recoil in particular, as so. So, for example, what I'm going to show you here is hip fire. And we end up out beyond this second ring here. So we go way beyond first and then just outside of this second ring. However, if we show you ADS, so again, we're not controlling anything. We're just ADSing and firing. We end up slightly under. So with the ADS, there's less correction that you're going to have to do. Obviously, you then get the drawbacks that come with ADS, increased flinch, uh, slower fire rate, etc. However, some of you are going to be ADS players, so I, I would show you that instead of coming down all the way to this left side of jaw i just pull i'd nudge it down just a little bit and the same thing works for the phantom so on the phantom you've got the initial figure seven spray that comes just it, it, it's less aggressive than the vandal it comes more just up to the second ring whereas if we go ads We only just go beyond the first ring. So again, very similar. You just want to adjust less coming down with your ADS fire than you do with your hip fire. 
So on the Stinger, what you get is this initial tight grouping again. First three or four bullets are quite close. Then it has a slight kick up to the right and then up over to the left. What you do find is, although you do get this kind of figure seven pattern, what you find is that it continues to arch up throughout. So it starts off central, comes up to the right, but then goes up to the left as well. There's no flat across like you get on the ARs. It's more up. So the way in which you want to control a Stinger is quite frankly, aim center mass, then come down to the left and then tuck into the middle. So, uh, as you can see, you want to start firing right in the center, then down to the left, and then drag into the right. On the ADS, so the free burst, again, we're just aiming and firing the zero recoil control at all. It's actually a little bit difficult to hold the mouse like this, but uh, <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, this is the spray pattern for this. As you can see, very little actual spread between the actual bursts. However, within the bursts, you do get a jump between each bullet. So for us to show you just one burst and how that looks. So you get this initial tight group, but then one will hop up in between. And it's not always the same. You do get some differences in between. So you do want to pull down slightly. However, you probably want to do it mid burst like so. So you want to adjust just after you fire. You don't want to be already pulling down. You want to give it half a sec and, and then pull down. The Spectre, we do get the figure seven again. However, it is not as aggressive as the Vandal. It matches the Phantom a lot more in terms of spray patterns. So if we start off with the firing, as you can see, we don't reach that second ring. We don't reach this area. We only end up going in between. It's slightly, I'd say it's slightly less aggressive than the Phantom, but it's, it's way less aggressive than the Vandal. So I'd control it in a similar way as the Phantom and I would tuck into this lower left side jaw area whilst you're firing. I wouldn't go all the way down towards near a chest. And then again, what I would do is when you get to the part where it's flicking left and right, it's much smoother on the Spectre than it is on the AR, so it's easier to control. However, my personal preference would be to reset myself and start firing again, like so. ADS actually does little to affect the spray pattern that you get. We still end up quite high vertically. We're still very similar horizontally. So I'd control it in the exact same way. I'd adjust into that lower left sided jaw area and I would continue to reset myself when I get to the horizontal flicks. Moving to the Bulldog, you can see that in the hip fire, which is the automatic fire on this weapon, you do indeed get a figure seven. However, it is much more right side focused. It is over on the right side for pretty much the entirety of the initial spread. Furthermore, it is also more right sided throughout the entire spray pattern. You don't get as much on the left. Therefore, what I would say is when using this weapon is to tuck way down left into this shoulder area here, and that should kick it up into the face. However, when you get to the flicking part again, I'd reset myself. But if you do want to continue the spray pattern, then you just want to be dragging in and out of this area here. When it comes to the burst fire, One of the things I wanted to show you there is that it's not the same across all bursts. So you don't end up with like this consistent burst fire pattern, which is uh, frustrating to say the least. What you do get is vertical recoil, which is slight. It's not extremely heavy. So you do want to pull down when you're using the ADS fire. You do want to pull down vertically so if we were aiming here you would want to come down into this lower jaw region you the thing that you're going to find is that when it kicks off left and right a little bit that seems to be quite random so it seems to be very hard to predict that showing how the weapon works in between bursts so you'll see it's very very tight on the bulldog like very very tight there is sometimes a little bit of left and right a little bit of uh, an increased height adjustment it seems to be randomly spread and there seems to be no way at all in which to decide to control that. So what I would do with the Bulldog is if I was firing it in the single burst fire mode like this, then I would just focus on having a tiny bit of downward pull. Whereas if you were firing at full rate of fire like we just saw, then I would focus on quite a lot of downward pull and just try and stay center mass. Next weapon is the Guardian and this is an interesting one to look at from a hipfire 
uh, compared to ADS point of view, and I'll show you why. So on the hip fire, you can see that we get a lot of vertical recoil similar to that of the Phantom. So we would again want to be pulling down when we're doing that. However, the left and right are random. They seem to just jump in whenever they like and you get a lot of bloom, especially in ADS. So if I was to show, if I was to try and compare the spray patterns between ADS and hip fire. So hip fire. So we get almost a full ring of vertical and some out to the right. Whereas we were to hip fire, uh, sorry, ADS. What you actually seem to end up with with ADS is a much wider spread. Again, these left and rights are random. Uh, whereas the vertical recoil is much more consistent between the two, what you do see quite regularly with this weapon in ADS is that if you're firing at full fire rate, you get a lot more bloom, you get a much harder to control weapon. So if I was using this weapon in ADS, I would single tap fire it and bring my fire rate down unless absolutely necessary. Otherwise, I would always hip fire this weapon. I know a lot of people lean towards ADSing it because the way it's built is a single fire weapon. But I, I really, really wouldn't be hammering away at this weapon in, in ADS. The, a lot of people get very frustrated with a weapon suggesting that uh, bullets are missing, etc. That they're not registering. What you actually are getting is an absolute f ton of bloom. Like, it, so much of it, it is incredible. So on this weapon, basically, if you were hip firing, you would always want to be pulling down. You want to be pulling down quite aggressively and coming all the way down to the stomach area because you just get so much bloom. In ADS, you want to be doing the same thing. But as you can see there, you do get kicks when you're in ADS that, quite frankly, you just don't see as much of when you're hip firing. Next up is the first of our LMGs, and that is the Ares. So with the Ares, obviously, you've got a 50 bullet mag, so we're expecting massive amounts of recoil here, especially at full fire rate. The first thing that you need to know is that the first couple of bullets are actually quite accurate for an LMG. It's not bad at all. And then we enter the figure seven. However, what we then get afterwards is a second figure seven. That's very important for you to pay attention to because instead of having to adjust for left and right, once you get to the later stages of this weapon spray, you actually need to adjust for a further up period. So when you're aiming at the bot, for example, what you want to do is be coming down tuck in and then down again, tuck in, down again. It, it, you, you're drawing like this concurrent seven pattern. So come down, in, down, in. And that's basically what you want to be doing when you're in gunfights with this weapon. It's, it's, it's a very difficult one to control. And the reason a lot of people struggle is because they think it takes that a normal seven pattern so that it comes up to the right and then draws left and right. But you don't, you get a second wave, a second kick. When you're, show, let's show uh, ADS. So ADS, ADS is slightly tighter, basically. You get a very slightly tighter spread, not much at all. Uh, I never really would suggest ADSing a weapon like this, but it gives you a very slightly tighter spread pattern. That's about it. That's the entire difference on this weapon. Not much, really. Moving on to the Odin, and this one's actually quite interesting. So whereas with the Ares, we get that second kick up of the seven. We don't actually get this on the Odin, but what we do get instead is a massive amount of vertical recoil right at the start. So as you can see here. So the, what you can see straight away is that even after the, like within, so we've got a hundred bullet mag here. By bullet 20, I'm already up here. So after that, the, the remaining 80 are all kept within this area here. So one of the things I've seen people do with this weapon is actually warm it up into a wall and then strafe out because it's far easier to control in those last 80 bullets. I personally wouldn't recommend that. I wouldn't recommend this weapon at all really, but what you can do with this weapon is if you can control that initial hard vertical recoil, then you've got a really good chance then of controlling the rest of the magazine. But I really would be aggressive on my vertical recoil control here. 
as you can see we're all the way down into the groin area when we're trying to control this the left and right flicks are going to be something that are difficult to control if you want to you can head out into this outer like outside of hip area um but yeah it's, it's a difficult one to control using ads So whereas with the Ares, I felt that there was a slightly tighter spread, but not much need really for ADS. On an Odin, I actually think you get a much better spread. Instead of ending up over here by bullet 20, we only get to here by the end of the magazine. So it's much better controlled. So I would, I do feel that the Odin has a good reason to be ADS. And again, if you can control that initial 20 bullets or so, then you've got a really good handle on this weapon. As you would expect with sniper rifles, ADSing puts the bullet exactly where you want it to be. However, the exception being two part. One, if you add in any movement, you end up way off in a different direction. Also, when you hip fire, you are playing a little bit of a roll of the dice, as so. You end up with, uh, it's, it's RNG, it's completely random. You, it's not a massive spread difference, but it is there. And the one thing you want to avoid is when you fire this weapon, you can be tempted to immediately pull the trigger again whilst your zoom is coming back in. But just to show you what that does, if you don't give it time to settle into the ADS, you end up off target. So you do need to give it that extra half a second to come in and line up the shot. The operator behaves very much the same way. It's actually much better in ADS in terms of consistency. It's actually, quite frankly, quite ridiculous how easily it resets. Like, bear in mind that I've literally... I've literally just got my fingers on the front of the mouse there. There's nothing on the back, and it's a perfect shot every single time. However, hip fire is terrible on this weapon it goes it, bear in mind we're only at five meters here and it was hard to show on the marshal how much it diverges but on the operator you are rolling a dice every single shot without fail and again you want to make sure that you give it time to settle so even though you've got that extremely accurate ads if you fire a split second too early you end up like this You, it, you need to give it that extra second to go through the animation of looking through the scope. You need to give it that time. Sometimes it is tempting to try and spam shots off as fast as possible. You also want to avoid any movement. Like I, So for that one there, I was aiming here and the bullet ended up down here. I was ADS'd, however, I took a slight strafe to the right and this is where I ended up. It's a very, very awkward weapon if you are not sat perfectly still, otherwise it's perfect. Moving to shotguns, and we're going to start with the Judge. This is the fully automatic shotgun, so we're just going to hold the trigger down and let it go wild. It's funny, really, because you do kind of get a figure seven pattern. It does start in the middle, kick up to the right, go off to the left. Uh, but obviously, because of the way it is pellet spread, it doesn't necessarily draw that. With each pellet blast, you get 12 randomly spread bullets. However, they do keep a relatively tight circle. I mean, at five meters, this does get much wider, obviously, as soon as you up it to any other distance. So the one thing I will say is with that figure seven pattern that it kind of does show, it's also kind of random as to how much it sticks to it. So what I would do with the judge is just always stay center mass, have some vertical control, but very little in the way of horizontal, purely because it's not 100% certain where it's going to go. So I just simply try and hit chest, stomach area. Onto the Bucky, and I know a lot of people like to use this during the eco round, especially on defense. You end up with an extremely consistent spread. I mean, we are again at five meters. If we were to up that, no doubt we'd end up much wider. But you end up with a very, very consistent spread even at max fire rate. It is random pellets, as you can see. However, if you do stick center mass on a target at close range, you are very likely to kill them with one shot. Finally, we're moving on to the sidearms. I've left these to last because typically they're the least used, except for during pistol rounds. The weapons that I would pay attention to here are the pistols. Not many people go for the shorty. The classic has a semi-automatic fire. It does stay nice and tightly grouped. However, what I do want to show you is it's not the same. It's not consistent. You end up with a consistent amount of horizontal spread, a relatively consistent anyway. It's always this nice tight group, 
but it doesn't necessarily always go exactly where you place it, and it doesn't follow a pattern of any kind. So with the Classic, you purely want to just have a tiny bit of vertical control. But after that, you're kind of letting the rest, the weapons RNG do the rest of the work. Moving to the Frenzy, this one's fully automatic. And you do get a baby version of that figure seven. Again, it's not entirely consistent. You will end up with slightly different placed bullets, but it does kind of follow this figure seven. You get this initial nice grouping, then a slight diagonal up to the right, and then it sticks left and right. You can see the actual amount of horizontal spray is very small, whereas the vertical actually isn't, like, it's not to be underestimated. So I, what I would do is pull down slightly, not all the way out to the left, but more into this bottom of the jaw area here. So... Moving on to the Ghost. Now, this is one of everyone's favorite pistol weapons. Very tight grouping, not much in terms of vertical recoil, very little in terms of horizontal recoil, however, you do have some. So what I would do with this weapon is simply pull down towards the jaw area. I wouldn't bother going left and right. But the one thing that I do want to show you, if we line up two sprays, Again, it isn't the same. You end up with a different spray depending on the RNG, the bloom that's in the game. So you just want to focus heavily on vertical recoil, not horizontal, because it's very difficult to predict. Sheriff is semi-automatic and can be fired at an extreme fire rate. I would never recommend firing the Sheriff at high fire rate, but just to show you where the spray pattern goes, one thing that I do want to show you as well on this one, it's not the same. Actually, we seem to end up with a vast amount of bloom and RNG, but if you pace your shot slightly, if you give yourself a slight second to allow the fire rate to slow down, it's actually very, very accurate. It doesn't require much pausing either. So at full fire rate, I would be very pressed for anyone to manage to control it. I'd give yourself a lot of vertical recoil. And as for the ones that kick out to the left and right, good luck with those. Whereas if you give yourself a slight pausing, you don't really need to adjust. It's very, very nice to handle if you give yourself that extra breathing room. And last but not least is my personal little favorite semi-automatic shotgun, and that is the Shorty. Again, it's a random spread. It's nice and tight up to five meters, pretty much awful afterwards. And you're going to be aiming center mass. Aim center mass, don't go anywhere else. Don't really go for the head. Aim for like this central chest area and you will be fine. It's very effective. If you aim for the head, what you actually risk is a lot of rounds to go up and around your target rather than into face. And that can actually result in you being less successful at killing people. So always aim center mass with this shotgun and get very close.